proudly we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. story today is entitled Grandpa Jump and is about a member of our modern younger generation in conflict with a rather surprising grandparent who wears Air Force blue and her realization that glamour is not something that youth alone can claim as their hallmark. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment but first trim as an arrow and faster than sound. That's how the new high-flying jets of today's United States Air Force measure up. They soar through the skies around the clock, constantly on the alert, protecting America's frontiers. And you can help keep them there. And at the same time, build yourself a highly rewarding career. How? By paying a visit to your local United States Air Force recruiting station and enlisting in the United States Air Force as a key man on the Air Force team. Yes, become an airman, and you too will be proud to wear the Air Force blue. For the exciting details, Visit the friendly folk at your local United States Air Force recruiting station. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Grandpa Jump. guys can really go. They were really jumping. They're gone. Absolutely gone. Put another record on, Janie. That's enough chatter. Now look, Jane, just because your mother's out for the evening is no reason to tear the roof down. But I've been sitting upstairs trying to get some work done, and all I hear is that constant music. So just let's hold it down in here. And uh, I think you'd all better wind this up by ten anyway. You understand, Jenny? Yes, Grandfather. Kelly. Hello, Colonel. Didn't think you'd be in today. Well, I've still got that test next week in my mind. I wanted to go over those wind tunnel reports again. You're going down to Eglin, aren't you, Colonel? Sure. We've got that shallow Florida Bay area down there. No cloud cover. Makes for almost perfect condition. I don't think you'll have any trouble. Are they all going to be live ejections? Mm-hmm. All of them. I don't think we can do any more with a dummy than we've already done. I don't have to ask you if you're going to make any. <laughs> you don't have to ask me. Colonel, I don't mean to intrude. All right, all right. Stop right there. You sound just like my daughter. But, Bonner, aren't you getting a bit old for that sort of thing? Well, this... look, Kelly, these jumps are things where experience really pays off. The first jump I make down at Eglin will be my hundred and first. I've got so I can feel and sense what's going to happen as it's happening and usually come up with a solution at the same time. Then I usually let some of the other boys on the project take over. Me, for instance? Why not, Kelly? You've jumped before. I'd like to get you in on some of this downward ejection stuff. Think you can be ready by Tuesday? Ready and waiting, Colonel. Better not mention this to my wife yet, Teddy. Mm -mm. Still under wraps. If everything goes all right down at Eglin, we should be able to release it. <laughs> That'll be a relief. I'm beginning to think I've got a blonde on this drink. <laughs> oh, Mother, he was terrible. Just terrible. He came in and stormed and screamed at us. He made Carol and Arthur go home at 10. 
on Friday night, too. That doesn't sound like your grandfather, Janie. That's exactly what he did. Janie, I try to understand your point of view, but sometimes it's utterly impossible. Uh, finished with the dishes? It's the last one, Mother. Good. Now, come on over here and talk to me. You're not a child anymore. It's a very hard lesson for parents to learn that their children are growing up, especially in your case. I don't understand, Mother. Growing up without a father the way you did, when he died soon after you were born, I thought the world was at an end. But the world didn't end, and here you are, almost all grown up. And pretty nice, too, most of the time. Mother, you've never talked to me like this before. I've never felt that we understood each other before. Gee. A father brings certain things to a daughter. Not presents as such, but companionship, love, understanding. You've been very lucky, Janie. You mean in having grandfather living with us? That's right. Gee, he's not like a real father. He's different. Being different doesn't necessarily make somebody objectionable. Mother, you make me feel awful. It isn't just that grandfather is, is anything like that. But, well, he never talks about anything. He just goes out to the base and comes home and goes out to his room with some work. He never says what he's doing. Security of keeping secrets is a part of being in the Air Force, too. Mother, it isn't. The Air Force is being glamorous and wonderful and all sorts of things like that. But the only thing we know about Grandpa is that he worked in the Aero Medical Laboratory with test tubes and stuff like that. Well, when Grandpa was younger, I know he used to do a lot of flying. He even jumped with a parachute a couple of times. But that was years ago. Look, Janie, I can't put Grandpa on the first rocket to the moon. I just think you're very fortunate in having him here. He helped you grow up as, as nice as you are. Well, I just guess there's nothing much I can do about it. I just wish she wasn't such an old fogey. Hello, Dad. Hi, Olivia. Oh, you look tired. Well, it's been a long day at the base. Where's Jenny? She went over to Carol's house. They had some studying to do. Can I bring you anything? No, I had some supper at the base. Wouldn't mind a fresh cup of coffee, though. You won't sleep. <laughs> Baby, the only thing that would keep me from sleeping tonight would be an A-bomb in our backyard. <laughs> All right. Come in the kitchen while I make some coffee. <laughs> um, had a long talk with uh, Janie tonight after supper. Oh, yes. I, uh, I meant to tell you about those kids Friday night. They were raising an awful ruckus downstairs while I was trying to do some work. Pop. You've got an obligation to Janie I don't think you're conscious of sometimes. Obligation? You're the man in her life, Pop. I hope that someday Janie's going to meet some nice young fellow and go off and make a home of her own. But she, she's got to have some sort of standard on, on which to make that judgment. Since Janie didn't have a real father to grow up with, that standard is you. Oh. And what you're saying is that I... I don't quite come up to standard. Bob, don't get me wrong. The last thing on earth I want to do is hurt your feelings. Oh, come on, Lydia. I'm not that sensitive. But if anything's wrong, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know about it. All right, then. I'll put it to you straight. Right now, more than ever before in her life, Janie needs understanding and help. <laughs> May look like it, but adolescence is never fun. I try to do the best I can, but it's not enough. She also needs your understanding and your help. All right, Lydia. It's as good as done. But uh, it'll have to wait a while. I'm pulling out in the morning. No! There goes the coffee boiling over. <laughs> you still want some? Hmm? Coffee? Oh, yeah, sure. Lydia, it will wait until I come back, won't it? Sure, Pop. It'll wait. <laughs> Well, I feel like slowing down, so slow down. 
You're in a foul mood this morning. Rush, 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 rush. That's all we ever do around our house. If it isn't mother going off to work, it's my grandfather going off somewhere. You're absolutely right. My grandmother made me set the table for breakfast this morning. Golly, you think I was a waitress or something. I'm telling you. I just don't care anymore. I wish she'd go away on one of those trips and never come back. Janie, what are you saying? Well, I mean it, every word of it. I wish she'd go away and never come back. <laughs> Kelly, I just thought I'd catch me 40 winks while I could. Once we get down to Eglin, there won't be too much time for sleep. You should do the same, Kelly. That's a funny thing, Colonel. I spent five years in the Air Force in World War II, have my commercial pilot's license, checked out in jet aircraft my reserve unit, and I still get as nervous as a cat when someone else is flying the plane. <laughs> I guess you know what I mean, then, when I say I have to make the first jump. What do we do at Eglin? In about two hours. Want to go over some of this stuff again? Can't do it too many times to suit me, sir. Yeah, what is it the man says? Know your equipment thoroughly, use it properly, and enjoy a long life. Check me out on that one, sir. That should be the project engineer's credo. All right, here we go again. Now, everything is automatic, right? Right. You fire the seat. The lap belt and parachute are automatic. Our object is to develop a foolproof way of giving air crewmen a more positive way of escape. Now, if everything goes all right, our plans call for 12 ejections with two subjects at each speed selection. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Grandpa Jumps. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Are you interested in a career with a promising future? There are hundreds of jobs, ranging from administration and accounting to electronics and construction, open to you in the United States Air Force. A handy new 84-page booklet entitled Pocket Guide to Air Force Opportunities gives you the complete story. Everything pertinent to an Air Force enlistment is covered, from basic training to promotion and travel information. And there's a special section where more than 100 technical training courses are described and illustrated. For these and many other interesting facts on what the Air Force can mean to you, pick up your absolutely free copy of Pocket Guide to Air Force Opportunities from your nearest Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Grandpa Jumps. Mama Mike, will you turn that thing off? I can hardly hear myself think. That's better. I'm sorry, that's the kind of music my granddaughter plays. What do you call it? Jump music? It jumps all right. Do you have any other family, sir? No, just my daughter and my granddaughter. I live in a woman's world and don't think it doesn't have its problems. You're not telling me a thing I don't already know, sir. I have three daughters. Three? Good morning, sir. I hope I'm not late. No, no, Kelly. I think we're all a little early. Oh, Captain Ruskin, this is Kelly Watson, who's acting as project engineer on these drops. Hi. You better be careful and keep us on the true course, Captain. Kelly here is an Air Force reservist who flew Mustangs in Germany during World War II. I don't think I can fly any way but straight, sir. <laughs> All right, then. Let's get started. Uh, Captain, do you have the map? Right here, sir. Now, this is most of the area we should be involved with. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Where are you planning on making your run? Right along this coastal area here. Now, this is Choctawatchi Bay. If we make our runs at 10,000, as you've indicated, a normal 10 to 12 knot wind should lift you right over this area here, where we can facilitate pickup by helicopter rather easily. Mm -hmm. Good, looks fine. So uh, why don't we take a couple of dry runs over the area, and if it all looks as good as this in the flesh, we can set a time and date for our actual drop, huh? You have any problems, Kelly? None whatsoever, sir. Even though they've assigned a new crew, they've got the same B-47 we were working on at Wright Pad out in the runway. And uh, since they haven't run a ring runner, there is no problem. Okay, then. Let's go. Hi, Don. 
I hope this thing isn't flying itself. No, I let the colonel sweat it out up there with the co-pilot. He suggested on this dry run that I come up in the nose here and take a look at the device. It's a good idea. I think you should be brief. Well, there's nothing you have to do with the aircraft except swing it out of the way after the ejection so we can have a line of sight of the parachute going down. I understand that the man to be ejected will always be wearing a red flying suit for tracking purposes. We won't be able to miss him. Right. Well, this is it. The hot seat. Doesn't look very formidable. Yeah, bit of it. No, thanks. I don't care to be blasted into the atmosphere without a parachute. No, no, go ahead, sit in it. We'll remove the hatch of the actual drop. There's no charge in the ejection mechanism now, anyway. Okay, I'm ready. Now, here in the nose of this plane, we've simulated the conditions that exist for the man who occupies this plane. Our triple threat man. The third man in a B-47. Combination, bombardier, navigator, and radar man. In this case, acting as triple threat, you have been completely fixed in the seat with shoulder harness and automatic lap belt prior to takeoff. I understand. Now, this here is called a D-ring. Just plain letter D. That's it. This D-ring is your triggering mechanism. When you pull this, the hatch blows up and fires the ejection seat. If you don't mind, this is something I'll leave alone. Now, follow this. When the seat leaves the aircraft, it activates a cartridge, which in turn initiates the gas-operated lap belt mechanism. Two seconds later, the belt fires, opening the belt and allowing the shoulder harness and lap belt tie-down straps to slide off. I get it. And the occupant leaves the seat in midair. Right. By the combined forces of gravity and drag, the greater the speed, the more forceful the separation from the seat. And the parachute opens. Automatically? I'm coming to that. The lap belt has a key that remains attached to the belt, and by means of a lanyard is attached to the automatic parachute device. As the seat leaves the individual, it pulls this device, and the parachute begins to develop. The parachute timer also has a two-second delay, so that in six or seven seconds following the ejection, you are dangling under an open canopy. Oh, here comes the colonel. I'm sure he'll have some more to add when he plugs in on the intercom. How'd you like to try our little device, Captain? Oh, thank you, Colonel. When the occasion demands, I'll be awfully glad it's here, but I'll leave the experimenting to you people. Oh, by the way, I think your co-pilot has turned back to the field. Well, I'll plug out and go up then. Well, incidentally, Kelly, thanks for the briefing. I'm developing some new respect for the Aero Medical Laboratory. Now, one thing more. Has anyone ever actually jumped with this thing? That's the Colonel, Don. Have they, sir? Well, that's what we're here for, Captain. <laughs> Okay, but only for a minute. I have to be home before supper. Isn't that gruesome? Well, leave your books over there so you won't forget them again. Okay. Do you think there's anything in your fridge to eat? I'm starved. I thought you had to get home for supper. I do. All right, come on. Go ahead, look yourself. I don't think I want anything. Mm, well, there's a couple of pieces of fried chicken here. You think your mother'd care if I had one? Oh, no, go ahead. She wouldn't care. Hmm. Gee, it's, it's quiet around here. My grandfather's gone to Florida. On a vacation? No, on business. You're lucky. I said you're lucky. Hey, what's the matter with you? You've been so funny all day. Carol, the things I said to you about is going away and not coming back. I feel terrible. Jenny, what made you change your mind all of a sudden? He was so nice the morning he left. We talked about the Air Force and things like that. He even kissed me before he left. He doesn't sound like my grandmother at all. Oh, I just know he's in terrible danger on, on some secret mission. I just know he is. You mean he's not with Chester? Carol, what he's doing is classified. See, that means he could be working with spies or anything like that. He's got to come back. He's just got to. All right, gentlemen. Now, you had a rather thorough briefing on what's to happen here today. We all know our assigned roles and what our exact job is to be. Once we're in the air, control of the operation will fall in the hands of my aircraft commander, Captain Ruskin. Okay, Don? All set, sir. And that's about it. Stay on the ball, alert to anything that might stand in the way of a successful ejection. Any questions? 
Okay, then, let's go. This altitude suit on, though. This might be Florida, but I'll bet it's mighty cold up here. Just thought I'd warn you, sir. We're about one minute from the course we set up for our final run. Okay. Hey, can you see the tracking planes? Yes, they're down there on our right, about three o'clock. You should be able to see them now. Wait a minute. There, I see them all right. I'm cutting out for a minute and going to contact them on my other channel. Just sit easy, sir. <laughs> you say sit easy? <laughs> Roger and out. Whizbang 2, this is Whizbang. Come in, please. Whizbang, this is Whizbang 2. Go ahead. Okay, Kelly, we're almost on our final leg. How are you doing? Just fine. I've contacted the ground unit, and they're all set to make the pickup wherever he lands. We've got a chopper standing by that'll have him back at the base before you are. That's a bet. You're on. All right, Whizbang, stand by. We're making our turn into the final leg of the course. Over and out. Pilot to crew. We are now on our final run. One minute to drop. Ready, sir? Ready as I'll ever be, Don. I'm cutting out now. We'll answer no more voice communication. All right, sir. And when the red light on my instrument panel goes on, I'll know that my message has been received. Stand by. 30 seconds to go. Inflate your partial pressure suit. Grasp your D-ring. Place your head firmly against the headrest. 20 seconds to go. Fifteen seconds to go. Ten, nine, eight. Airspeed, 203 knots. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire. hardly hear himself think. Hmm? No, 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 leave it alone. I guess you can't account for everyone's taste. And uh, for some reason, it doesn't sound as bad as it did. Maybe it just needs getting used to. Uh, go ahead, sir. You were describing the sensation. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know, Kelly. I, I guess the best way of telling it is that it's, it's just a sudden swish and you're gone. Was there any jolt? No, almost none. No, none of that sickening feeling you get when you're in an elevator coming down from a tall building. Did you black out? No blackout, no red out. Just a few moments of uh, confusion. <laughs> By the time you can move your head to look at the belt, the seat is gone, you're free-falling, the parachute opens, and you find yourself just as easy as anything swaying in the breeze. I saw the chopper swinging and get you. You were up and out of the water in less than 30 seconds. Oh, incidentally, Kelly, you can go ahead and call your wife if you want to. This whole operation has been released to the press, and she might get a kick out of hearing from you. You're calling your family, sir? Hmm? No. No, I think I'll wait until morning. Then I'll call. I just want my granddaughter to have a little time to react to the headlines before I call. <laughs> so you know something? That, uh, that music isn't too bad. It kind of, uh, how do you say, it, it jumps a little, doesn't it? <laughs> Janie, will you answer that? Janie, did you hear me? Oh, Mother, it's so wonderful. Look at what the paper says. This handsome middle-aged... Oh, Mother, they say he's Jenny, middle Jenny, will you answer the phone? All right, Mother, you don't have to shout. Um, Jenny, get the door. I'll get the 
for Oh, Mother, for goodness sake. Jay, did you see the morning paper? Isn't that wonderful? I told you he was doing something simply wonderful and dangerous. You said he was a spy. When Arthur delivered the paper this morning, he rang the bell. And I guess I told him a thing or two. You know, they might even offer him a movie contract. Grandpa? Who else? Gee. Well, I have to be going. We're all leaving for the country for the weekend. My grandmother said that if I wasn't back in ten minutes, she'd see that my... Well, I better be going. And congratulations, Jane. It isn't every girl whose grandfather gets to be a movie star. Oh, Jenny, if you have to slam the door. Who was that? That was Carol. She said that Grandpa might get a movie contract. <laughs> He'll be very pleased to hear that. He's on the phone, wants to talk to you. From Florida? Yes, from Florida. Well, go ahead, silly. Hello, Grandpa? Hi, Jenny. Grandpa, we read about the first downward ejection in this morning's paper. I know. Your mother told me. Grandpa, did you really do all that? Being shot out of a plane and all that? <laughs> Not bad for an old man, huh? Old man? Why, Grandpa, how could you say such a thing? You're the most. The, the, the most? The most. The greatest. The best. Solid. Oh. Oh, well. Glad to hear that. <laughs> you better let me talk to your mother now. Grandpa, one thing more. Yes, Jenny? If you do go to Hollywood, will you take us with you? If I go to... What? Opportunities by the hundreds. They're opening now in the United States Air Force. You can take advantage of these opportunities and build yourself a highly rewarding career. In the Air Force, you'll find a specialized career to suit every aptitude and interest, with special emphasis on leadership and rapid advancement. You'll train in the world's finest technical training schools, and when you graduate, you'll be a proud member of this high-flying defense team. Now is the time to get complete information on your career in the United States Air Force. Pay a visit to your nearest Air Force base or your local Air Force recruiting station today and talk it over with the friendly people there. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>